guys, this is this is this is uh, the, we are on visual arts, mm -hmm. so the talking and posing is, is a bit of a problem here. But this is definitely visual arts. Photography is what we're doing right now. Thank you so much, Aisha. You had an amazing time on paintbrush. You, you can just join me over here. Okay, thank you. <laughs> we'll still continue. I don't know if you're able to multitask, but yeah, I. Yeah, it's uh, okay. You able to go? I manage. Okay, fine, yeah. totally. This is photography, Kava Kawaida. I don't know if we need to just push this a little bit because okay. now the All angles right. are a bit different. All right, no problem. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Perfect. So if you if you see me smiling in a way that you'd like to capture, uh -huh. you go ahead and do that. All right, all right. I'll yeah, this shoe is like that. Could you actually All right. Okay, fine. Mm -hmm. As you tell me a bit of you about yourself, your name, your brand name. Okay, my name is Donald Gregory. Mm -hmm. uh, I run a photography company called Compliment Pictures. It's been in existence for like three years. Wow. It's been a long journey, uh -huh. having been able to just start from, from somewhere uh -huh. till where I am, uh -huh. uh, and all glory to God. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yes. Three years, did you stumble on it? Is it something you wanted to do? Did you go to school for it? Uh, um, for me, um, I, uh, it's not something that I grew up knowing that I'll one day be a photographer. I used to see those photographers uh, within the estates with the bikes, uh, taking beep, photos. Beep, 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 beep. Beep. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't picture myself uh, at that point. That, that was the photos. image actually that we had of, photographer. of photographers. So yeah. of course no one would have thought. Yes, yeah. yes. But uh, when, I was in, uh, when I was in the university, that was multimedia university. I did bachelor of, bachelor's in mass communication. Mm -hmm. We were able to get a, we, we had a, f a photography unit there. Uh -huh. And that is where I developed a, a very big interest in it. Because we used to, to, to study wi widely in photography, taking photos, uh, well, well taken photos, we, we, we criticize them. We are, we are taught how they're, they, they're shot and mm -hmm. everything. So it grew an interest, it, uh, the interest grew from that point. Mm -hmm. Then as I continued, I got a camera and this is where I am right now. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So what would you say? Uh, come and I need photo. Unaka, unaka. Unaka. To, get, to, get change. to change? To change? Okay. change light kidogo. Okay. Mm -hmm. You do you, you do you. Because with photography, mm -hmm. uh, lighting is key. Yes. And you need to get your light set correctly. Okay. So that you don't get dark images. Oh, so that's, that's where you want it. Yes. Okay, unless I move. Yeah, unless you move. Okay. But we'll just take that one shot then. There All right. you go. All right. What would you say sets you apart or sets your, your brand apart from other photographers? Um, I'm still discovering myself because uh, at the moment. Three years, come on now. Of course, yes. you know, that's, that's too. Okay, what I mean is uh, I haven't specialized as, as yet. Mm -hmm. I'm still doing a bit of everything from family events to corporate events to, to beauty shoots and everything. But what sets me apart is my style. I believe my style is unique. Mm -hmm. uh, as much as there are photographers that I look up to and I really admire their work, mm -hmm. I really try as much as possible to create my own style which is in the process of being developed. Okay, yes. getting into the industry, of course, there mm -hmm. are many, we've got models of photographers yes. out there mm -hmm. and they're huge at what they do. What did you say, or did you have someone, you know, walk you through the journey? Because there's something, there's, it's, it's totally different being mm -hmm. passionate about something and now getting into the business yes. side of it. Mm -hmm. So did you have someone walk you through that? Uh, let me say, for my foundation, the biggest person who, the, the person who played the biggest role was my lecturer mm -hmm. back in the university. Uh, the, that as much as it was a unit that not so many people were were interested in, I, I got myself so interested in that unit. My foundation was built from that point. Uh, then along the line, I've met very many people who've been a key, who've been key players in in my growth. Mm -hmm. um, the list is long, okay. but there are people that I admire, like Osborne Masharia. Uh -huh. I really admire his humility as well, because I just saw his work, his marvelous work. I was able to inbox him. And we were able to set a meeting. He agreed to meet me. He agreed to give me like 15 GB of his tutorials uh, that he works around with. So that was a humbling experience. And along along the way, I've met so many people who have been an inspiration to me. Mm -hmm. And this is, uh, I thank God for That's all that. That's really good. Mm -hmm. Three years down the line, are you doing that for someone else who's trying to get into the industry? Are yeah. you holding someone, else, someone else's hand? Uh, I try as much as possible. Uh -huh. um, whenever I get opportunities, Whenever I get, I, whenever I have a shoot, I try getting someone to to come to come in as an intern. Mm -hmm. uh, through the process, through through the shoot, I am able to guide them, to 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 make them know a few basics, 
a few a few skills in photography mm -hmm. and also i can't say that i really have someone that i'm really working with uh, or like one on one but i'm getting there slowly because okay. With the capacity that I have right now, mm -hmm. it's just maybe like a one-off. We meet, I show you. Next time, if we meet, well, I'm good. Okay, mm -hmm. I think that's that's good. It's a place to start, though. Thanks. So, equipment. Mm -hmm. Let's talk equipment. How expensive or how affordable is it for an upcoming? I'm not calling you upcoming, mm -hmm. though. But you had to start from there. Yes. Getting your own equipment, setting up your own company. Mm -hmm. How how easy or difficult, or what could have been done to make it a bit easier for you? Uh, let's say let's start with the equipment first of all. Yes. As you can uh, as you can see, in fact, you don't have to enroll for gym classes if you have this one. <laughs> just, let me try. Let try. me try. Let me try. It's a Nikon D750. It's a middle middle range camera, mm -hmm. but it's it's among the best in the market. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, the lens is what makes it so heavy because the lens ah. itself is is quite huge. Yes. Okay. Can, how many kilos are this? Because it's pretty heavy. It's almost like three kilos. Yeah. Yes. So with with gear, it's 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 really expensive, mm -hmm. but uh, along the way, as as you continue, obviously with growth, you get enough money to buy more. I started with a camera that was around forty thousand. Uh, I had saved from uh, some internship we had back in back when I was just in, in in still in campus. I was able to get to save a little bit then. Luckily, my parents was, were very supportive. They added something little for me, so I was able to buy that camera. One year down the line, with the 40K, mm -hmm. I had really made something, something out of that. And it, was, it was something that really gave me that motivation that I really need to grow from, from this point. Mm -hmm. And then I had this challenge that at times you're invited as the official photographer. Whoa. You come with that camera that is worth 40,000, 40, let's say. Mm -hmm. Then there are other photographers who've just come in for the event, mm -hmm. and they have such huge cameras, such it big... It makes you feel intimidated? It makes you feel intimidated, yeah, and the client bit. at some point uh, looks around and maybe they'd be like... Uh, they'd be like uh, before, before, we, we need to uh, bring this conversation to an end, but before mm -hmm. that, you've been nominated for a couple of awards, yes. and you've actually won one of them. Yes. Tell me about that. Okay, I've been privileged to be nominated for like three, three awards. Uh -huh. uh, one of them was the Mamas, Mamas Photographer. Whoa. Uh, it was the first time, like it, that was in 2014. Mm -hmm. They wanted a photographer to cover That's mamas really ba uh, down in Daban. Mm -hmm. uh, so I got, I was shortlisted among thousands of entries. Uh, we went through the the process. Unfortunately, I did not win that one. Then secondly came Nikon, uh, the brand that I shoot with. They had a photo summit and they needed uh, like photographers to to submit their entries. They had over 800 entries. I was lucky to be among the top 30 finalists. Good. And through that, it went well, though I did not win. Then recently, we had the Kenya Glamour Awards yeah. by Jumia. Mm -hmm. uh, I was nominated for the top photographer of the year award. And fortunately, I won that one. That you bagged. Yes, yes, I did. <laughs> That's and really good. Many thanks to all people, all who support me. Mm -hmm. I'm very grateful for that. Kweli mm -hmm. I am happy for you. And you. kudos. Thank How can people get in touch with you? Social media? Uh, number if you're comfortable, mm -hmm. location of your studios. Okay. Um, it could be easier if you search uh, hashtag compliment pictures. Hashtag compliment pictures. Yes, compliment with an E. Mm -hmm. Alternatively, you can on Instagram at Greg underscore compliment pictures. Oh, Greg underscore compliment. Yes. That, that's, that's where? Facebook? That, I'm that's everywhere. Instagram. That's, that's Instagram. Instagram. Facebook okay. compliment pictures, you mm -hmm. can get it. Compliment with an E. Okay. Yes. Asante, Sam. Asante. We'll just try and beat okay, you I'm not, I'm not so good at poses. Yeah. But I'll try. No. Okay. This so is the, more the of. should be this, on that side. This but is, you can just. This is more of a close up. So don't okay. worry about. All right. Um, even, is, that, is that where? Or here? That's the button. I got okay. it. I got it. Is my pose okay? I think you're fine. All right. So is, did it happen? Uh, we'll have to do more <laughs> classes. <laughs> but that was great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. This has been photography. Moving on to creative of the week, still on visual art. I've got Olivia who is doing something that should have been done many, many, many years ago. Thank you. You're doing it now. Karibu sana to Life and Style. Thank you. You look lovely. Oh, thank you. So do you. <laughs> Asante sana. So let's start with a bit of introduction. I've got these amazing dolls. I'll tell you my story in a bit. Just let's, let's hear about you. 
Well, about the dolls? Or yeah. Yeah, okay, fine. We start from you going to the dolls, of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about me? I, I'm a bit boring. Just, oh, <laughs> go on. We'll take what you give us. Um, well, I'm Olivia Mengich, mm. and um, yeah, I'm an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. I've always wanted to be an entrepreneur, so I have an MBA in entrepreneurship. But like most Kenyans, I started by working somewhere. Yeah. And then you know, the, the entrepreneurship drive continued to you know, eat at me until finally I gave up. And I started something else, another business, which was actually in photography. Whoa, okay. <laughs> Coming from what you were doing, but it was a stock photography platform, still, still exists. And then the next project was Swahili Princess. Mm -hmm. um, this is a product that uh, was inspired by the desire to provide young African girls, young East African girls, with a doll that reflects their beautiful physical attributes. Yep. Is, and also their culture through the fashion um, mm. that the dolls wear. Yeah. I totally love this. <laughs> okay. We grew up with dolls that don't look like anything, anything like us. Amen. With hair that does not look like mine. Uh -huh. With blue, green. There you go. This is exactly. This is Barbie. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> this is exactly this is what, we grew what I'm up talking with. about. Exactly. And if you did not have this growing up, mm. then your mom doesn't love you. <laughs> like, and it was the only way you'd get a, a doll mm -hmm. that actually had um, Africa kinky hair mm -hmm. is if you made them from paper. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Or a rag doll, for example, yes, as well. Yes, and yeah. then you take a hair piece mm. and just, you know, stitch it in there. Exactly. Yeah. You actually brought this. I, have to, I had to bring this. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with playing with, playing with a doll that, you know, that is of another race, mm -hmm. you know. But unfortunately, in Africa and actually the rest of the world, um, white is the default race for various things. Yeah. yeah. So I think that the reason, the reason why I'm doing this is because this, the problem of playing with only white dolls has a detrimental effect on our development, on, especially on girls, because we want to be beautiful. Yeah. And dolls are a symbol of beauty. And, and, and racial stereotypes. So we end up looking at the white doll and we're seeing it as, you know, beautiful. And then we, we drive towards becoming something similar to it. But we can never get there, you know. So it's just this false idea of where we need to be. Mm -hmm. And um, I do believe that it's, it's come to a time where we need to show young girls that you are beautiful just as you are. True. Yeah? And there's beauty. There's different types of beauty throughout the world. You know, I've always wondered why they... We, we're Kenyans, we're Africans, we're black. I've always wondered why they thought we would like this doll. I don't think that they thought that we would <laughs> like this dolls per se. Um, okay, I'd mentioned earlier that white is seen as a default race, right? Mm -hmm. And the reason for this is the companies that are producing these dolls are businesses, right? And the majority of uh, the people in the world that have a higher purchasing power in the Western world, and they happen to be Caucasian. Yeah. So what we do have a bulk supply, a, a large supply of white dolls throughout the world. Mm -hmm. um, so every other race uh, from every other color does suffer the same uh, issues that we go through with regard to not having black dolls on supply. Mm -hmm. The other thing is that you do have black dolls in, for example, America, you know, because Afri African Americans are quite African conscious, especially right now. Yep. Um, so the, there are black dolls there. However, they're still trying to penetrate that market, right? <laughs> and the people that bring the dolls here is not necessarily Barbie or, or Mattel or, you know, um, American Girl, you know, these are not the brands that bring them here themselves. These are other businesses that are trying to, mm. uh, you know, to sell dolls within Africa. And as I said, the default, the default race is white and the la there's a large supply of white dolls. They actually make mannequins that are white. So now they're trying to even make mannequins that, that, are, black. that are black. So exactly. it's something that is cutting across from dolls all the way up. How has it been uh, trying to push this into the market when we're used to this? Actually, I think that the goodness of, you know, let me put it like this, there has been a crazy demand for black dolls. Whoa. You know, there's a demand for black dolls, and not just black dolls, African dolls. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so for, because we don't have that many black dolls and African consciousness, the thing I, I mentioned earlier, isn't just in America. You have it going on throughout Africa today. Mm -hmm. Um, so African parents, for example, want to give their, do their children um, dolls and, uh, and toys that have positive views of black people, of African people. Like I mentioned, this has something to do with our development. So you do have parents who are African conscious and want to provide such toys to their children. Um, as such, when I brought this to the market, it was in June this year. Mm -hmm. And it started really small, it was on Facebook. And I remember from the first post, um, within the first hour, I had you know, the first two orders. 
And I was like, wow, what is this? What's going on? And um, so it picked up really, really fast. Mm -hmm. So because of the demand, the demand has fed my growth. Um, I was focusing on another business when I started this, and now this has taken over because of the demand. Um, so I, I take the time to mention where we are right now, mm -hmm. and I can show you uh, how it came about. So we started on Facebook and then went on to um, online, uh, online stores. I was Jumia and Fargo, mm -hmm. Fargo Shopping. That's by Wells Fargo. So um, I now I'm stocking in five of, of the seven Toy World stores and Carrefour. So that's where the demand led to, you know, to a larger supply and... Uh, you know, so c customers want to see the dolls in various places. So, yeah. This is really good. Yeah. June, that's about, what, six months? Yeah, six months. It was end June, actually. And that, about five months. Yeah. Where do you want to take this now? Because it's already shown that the market needs it. It's mm. a gap that you filled. Where do you want to take it from there? From there, um, I can tell you what's next uh, okay. in terms of, uh, so as you can see, this doll is more your color than my color. So yeah. the, th the other thing within, you know, our beauty, we are, within black people, we already have politics of beauty, beauty. And one big thing is the light skin, dark skin dichotomy. Mm -hmm. So we do have issues with young girls and, and mothers and even mothers who are bleaching their children. So you have women and men as well who are bleaching and because of that dichotomy and this false hierarchy of beauty. Yeah. So the next thing for me would be to create a darker tone. And the reason I didn't start with this, this is one thing that many people ask me. I didn't start with creating a darker one because of cost. <laughs> Okay, but, yeah. what, of course what? Yeah, dark of cost. Um, oh, it, cost oh, 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 oh. It's, it costs more to create this, co this skin tone or also black skin tones or darker skin tones than it mm -hmm. does to create a white doll. Oh. Yeah, so that's a whole different thing. So I'm going into the dark doll um, and then just, you know, trying to push the brand. So it's all about awareness. Like you said, we're still at the beginning. We're mm -hmm. still at the onset. Yeah. So there's a lot more to be done with regard to pushing it. And um, maybe, who knows, yeah. uh, we might um, have this idea of, of creating a TV series based on the dolls just That's to push the cultural true. angle yeah yeah because it's not just in dolls i mean cartoons um young girls are looking at disney princesses and, and wondering yeah. why they can't be disney princesses as well um i remember reading this and this young girl was talking about how she can't be um, a princess because she has braids oh. you know exactly <laughs> so <laughs> kids see these things and they notice that they don't look like Cinderella or, or, or what's the name of Beauty of Beauty? Okay, whatever. Those, all this <laughs> no, that <laughs> takes me back to people. what yeah. I said at the beginning of yeah. the show that um, this should have been done when I was growing up because most people who end up bleaching and thinking they're not beautiful is because of what they grew up seeing. Exactly. All I'm seeing is a blonde hair, light mm -hmm. skin. You have to be skinny. Uh, do you look, are you looking at me? <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> I know. But yeah. <laughs> are you looking at making dolls that are a bit plump? A bit, yes. Yeah. Um, with time, with the support of customers, we'd, we'll get there. It costs much more to create a full-figured doll or even a doll of another mold. Mm -hmm. Like I mentioned, this is all, it's a business at the end of the day. So the, peop the manufacturers, uh, let's look at, look at it like print. When you have to print anything you, and uh, you want to print something that's completely different, um, especially this, this regard to 3D printing and, and, and manufacturing, the rotor casting and the kind of thing. So when you're doing this type of printing and you want to introduce a different mold, mm -hmm. you're going to pay an arm and a lead. It would cost me three to four times the cost of creating this doll to create it. Yeah. So the business, the brand has to grow for us to be able to afford to do that. But it's something you're looking into. Definitely. I mean, look at our <laughs> figures compared to... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. You know, I know. international standards. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Challenges so far, something that you think the, the environment or people around you could do to ensure that we embrace this and push it more? Let me put it like this, huh? Mm -hmm. I think that right now the market is there, especially with regard to the middle to upper classes. Okay. Um, so it's not really for anybody around me. Okay. Uh, but it is for me to try and build awareness. Oh. It would be lovely if, uh, you know, we had more uh, opportunities for entrepreneurs to, to showcase their, their products and to have more awareness. So we had, if I had support like that from the environment mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, government or whoever, like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I know you didn't want to go that direction. I, I didn't want to go that direction. <laughs> I but we, you're had, holding yeah, back. we do have support for entrepreneurs, you know, but it's not yet where it should be. Mm -hmm. So I think that because the next thing for any entrepreneurship product, for any product to get to market and to be continuously purchased or used is for there to be awareness and co continuous awareness uh, okay. raised for it. So I think that that's uh, 
something that would help. Olivia, this is pretty fresh mm -hmm. and the market is eager to get it. Mm -hmm. But then again, you have to put yourself out there. That means your branding, your marketing, your sales. Mm. This, you have to be very visible. Mm -hmm. So what is it that you're doing to ensure that your visibility, your branding as an entrepreneur is actually putting you out there or creating, um, you know, uh, the market for you? Okay. I'll tell you what I should do and what I'm doing. Okay. <laughs> As, okay so, um, like I mentioned, my 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 uh, target market is middle to upper class. I'm mm -hmm. looking at C1 to A. So, uh, and and when you're looking at this kind of people, I mean, you're in TV, so yeah. you know that you have a lot of a above the line marketing that is required for, you know, for you to really reach that market, mm -hmm. and that's costly. Yep. Yeah. So what I'm doing now is a lot of digital marketing, um, working with bloggers and, and anybody who's, who's interested or who'd let me come onto their platform, like you. You're welcome, you're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so right now I am, you know, I'm taking every opportunity I can, uh, if there's a blogger or, or, or paper or magazine. So far we've been on Kotio Africa, we've been on uh, Nairobi Business Monthly um, and a few blogs, um, yes, yeah, so, that's so far what we've been able to do, but a lot of digital marketing, social media marketing. That means there's time and opportunity for you to do much greater exactly. things. Exactly, as I grow, then True. I reinvest into Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Yeah. We need to finish this conversation. <laughs> okay. How can people get in touch with you, your Facebook page, because that's where you said, I'm sure it's huge right now. Mm -hmm. Facebook page, are you on Instagram, are you on Twitter? Okay, we're on Facebook, mm -hmm. um, Swahili Princess. Instagram, same, Swahili Princess. Uh, we have a website, uh, but if you want to reach, it depends on who uh, wants to reach it to, and get in touch with us. Um, so customers can get us on social media mm -hmm. or email or call us um, for, you know, retailers, we do have the website, so you can email us or you can also call us. So that's, um, yeah. What's the email address? It's info at swahiliprincess.com. Okay. Asante San Olivia. Okay. I think you're doing an amazing job here. Thank you. And our babies will be proud to have you had, for you to have started this for yeah. them. Exactly. So they wouldn't have to deal with this. With only blue, that. <laughs> blue eyes. Okay. Moving on swiftly. I love blue eyes. <laughs> <laughs> this has been creative all the week. You're taking a very short commercial break when you come back. Aisha will be with you on Spoken Words. Don't go too far. Excuse your loose moral squeezing ilambi what in you love. Do sababu since juicy, HIV haikwangi reserved for the red light district. So pochunga uta get served but you never really deserved. Now si ogope kutoka jasho. Hata jasho huwa ime jachumvi. Do you success, Lada?